Hey everybody, welcome back to The Dangin. On today's episode, we're continuing our review of the Epson LS12000. Stick around. Welcome back to The Dangin, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to part two of my review of the Epson LS12000. As you saw in the first episode, we went through some of the details of the unboxing of this new projector and what it included along with the mount uh, and the specifications. On today's episode, I'm going to do a thorough review now that I've actually mounted the projector here in The Dangin. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, and let's get going. Okay. So I finally got around to mounting the LS12000, and let me just say, this thing is a beast. With the dimensions measuring like seven and a half inches by 20 inches by another 17 and a half inches, and the weight at 28 pounds, this was by far the largest projector that I've installed here in the Dangin. In fact, just carrying the box around and putting it into position was a huge chore. But you know what? It was worth it. Compared to the other projectors that I've installed here in the Dangin, such as the BenQ X3000i or the TK700i, this thing really packs a punch. Both of those projectors are fine, right? Like everything is cool about them, newest features, 4K60, gaming, low latency mode, but they didn't have some of those features that were really necessary for me to take full advantage of the technology I already have here in the Dangin. With the Epson's laser light source, brightness, lens shift, contrast, black levels, 4K 120 hertz, gaming, HDR, and quiet operation, I knew I had to make the upgrade. But my next concern was, do I have the right cables run through the wall in order to handle it? You see, the Epson LS12000 is the first projector that I've owned that offers an HDMI 2.1 port. So it has nice features such as 4K 120 hertz for gaming, eARC, HDCP 2.3, etc. In order to run those, you got to have the right cables. So a couple months back, I installed two Rui Pro 4K 120 hertz, 8K capable, HDMI 2.1 optical HDMI cables. The installation step was relatively straightforward and the chief mount that the projector comes with is a really sturdy and nice mount. Um, once you get everything lined up on your ceiling, attach your lag bolts and uh, it's pretty much ready to go. That really brings you to the next step, which is setting the projector up off of its uh, initial use. And let me tell you, that starts up pretty well. Um, this projector boots in about 10 seconds, and that includes the uh, sliding door that opens in front of the lens to keep the dust out. Now, I'm projecting this onto my Sievertson screen's 120-inch Cinema Gray screen, and uh, the next step was getting it aligned perfectly. Now, as you guys know, in the past, I've used some BenQ projectors. In fact, the majority of the projectors that I've reviewed don't have any type of lens shift, but this projector changed that. This has a four-way lens shift, and it was very easy to align using the remote that came with the projector. Now, this remote has all different sorts of settings. Uh, the lens shift is just one of them, and that's actually got a dedicated button. So when you jump into the remote, you can hit the lens button, you can adjust the focus, the lens shift, the keystoning, all different sorts of things, and that button's right front and center. Now that we have the projector up and running and aligned to the projector screen, that brings up the UI. Um, a fairly straightforward user interface for the Epson. I'm not sure if this is the same as previous models because I've never reviewed one before, but it is relatively straightforward and there are a ton of features. Just at the top, it kind of gives you the most recent or most commonly used features. And then as you scan down the left side, down to the bottom, you get into the more intricate pieces that the projector allows you to adjust. 
as I mentioned before, some of the easier ones to access are the lens shift, as you can see here. And then also you can adjust the brightness. And with that, um, I would say that 75% is what I would consider normal for this. Um, it's like an eco mode and the decibel level is, uh, is non-existent. Like I cannot hear the projector running at 75% brightness. If you put it up to 100, you can hear the fans kick in a little bit, but still, compared to every other projector I've um, reviewed, the, the noise level is super low. So that's another positive. Next, I wanted to show you what the Epson looks like with all of the lights on down here in the Dangen. I mean, as you can see, and as you might know with other projectors, typically they don't work too well when the lights are on. And it's really no different with the Epson. However, um, you can still see the image. You can have it on in the background. Maybe if you're just putting up like um, the music app or something like that from your media streaming device, it'll be just fine. And you'll still be able to make out like what the artist is or whatever. But really, it gets really nice when you drop your lights down to about 50%. So like in this portion here, you can see that the lights are dimmed just about 50% and you can see the image just fine. So what I like to do is, you know, in the danger, I'll play some poker with some buddies. We'll have some lights on so you can still see the card table. And then at the same time, you can have something like a movie or a basketball game going on in the background. But really where this projector truly shows its true colors, no pun intended, is when you get those lights off. And if you have um, any type of light control ability and you can get complete darkness in your um, media room, this is the projector for you. The colors pop, the black levels pop, everything shows up awesome. Movies look especially good with the Epson, and honestly, the black levels on 4K UHD discs comes out really well, so that's probably one of my favorite things to do with this projector currently. The other thing I found interesting was that the Epson has frame interpolation, so if you're not familiar with what that is, ultimately that gives you the soap opera effect. And I did find that for some movies that were hard to watch because of Judder or something like that, maybe it was something from YouTube, if you hit that frame interpolation, it really helps smooth out the image. And I know that no professionals recommend using that because it's just adding latency and things like that to the picture. But, you know, if you're not too scared to use something like that and then you don't mind it, uh, give it a shot. It's cool that they have that feature. So one of the final reasons I purchased the Epson LS12000 was for gaming. And that brings me to the point where I want to make sure that I get the absolute best use of the technology that I have. And when PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X announced that they'd be supporting HDMI 2.1, I couldn't wait for a projector to come out with that te technology too. Um, anything that supports 4K 120 or ray tracing and things like that, I think really up, this, up the, uh, the gaming standards for me. So the Epson handles that and it handles it really well. Whether the game is brand new and offers ray tracing like Gran Turismo or great HDR and ray tracing like Star Wars or even an older game like Uncharted that just has awesome HDR and good scenery, everything looks fantastic on this projector. And then you get into the games that support 4K 120 and what makes those games really cool on this projector is because it brings that latency down to like 20 milliseconds um, is great for a projector. I've reviewed a ton of gaming projectors, and honestly, this one felt just as smooth as those. And those those ranked back at like 16 milliseconds. So super happy with it. Games look great. The motion rate looks great. Definitely a key feature for me purchasing this device. All right, so let's round up some of the things that I really love about this projector. I'd say on my list of favorites, the first and foremost thing is the laser light source. It's super bright. It boots up super quick and it has a really, really nice detail. The second feature that I like the most, and it's specific to my uh, media center, the Dangen, uh, that's the lens shift. I haven't reviewed many projectors with lens shift and this one has it and it just works really well. If you wanna get into those you know, fine areas of adjustment, that's a key feature uh, for this projector. 
The next would be the price point. I mean, 5,000 bucks is what they want for this, but it comes with a mount, it comes with a three-year warranty, it comes with like a cable cover. It really comes with whatever you need uh, to, to hit the ground running with something with this much technology. And when you look at what's next in line, such as like the Sony's or the JVC's, it's a way better bang for your buck. Then you get to the contrast ratios, the black levels. I mean, the colors just look super vivid, really clear. The movies have excellent black levels from, from anything from streaming all the way to, like I said, 4K UHD discs and even gaming. The black levels come out great. Uh, the 4K 120 hertz. I can't say enough about that. If you're a gamer, this projector is for you. And with new next-gen consoles, PC gaming, Man, this thing handles it, and it handles it well. And then on top of that, it's just quiet. You could put this right next to your you know, viewing position, whether that's your couch or above your head, just like I have it, you can't hear it. It's whisper quiet. So that brings me to the final portion is, you know, what don't I like, or what do I think it still needs to improve upon? Well, I don't have much experience with Epson, and I would have to say that, you know, the first thing on the list is it's not true 4K. Now it is 4K in the sense that it pixel shifts, but it's not true native 4K. So, you know, one day I'd like to see Epson upgrade to that. Uh, the next thing is the size of the projector. It's pretty big. I mean, it's it weighs 30 pounds. Um, you gotta find a good spot for it and um, you have to have room. So, you know, maybe if they could decrease the size of it in the future, that would be cool. Um, the user interface, yeah, I mean, it's easy to use. Um, it's a little complicated, but, um, you know, they could probably improve upon it, make it a little bit more simple, uh, label some things uh, a little bit easier. But other than that, that's okay. Um, there's no speakers. That's another thing. Um, so if you do just want to play some content through the projector and you don't want to turn on your surround sound for whatever reason, you know, that's kind of a bummer. I'm sure you can plug something in if you want to add a small speaker, that's fine. But it'd be cool if they added in a couple of 5-watt speakers. There's also no 3D. Now, I don't use 3D too much, and I know a lot of you guys do. Um, so that's a disappointment just from, you know, the fan base. You definitely want 3D. Uh, for those that are sticking around with your products that are used to having it and this does not have 3d So that kind of sucks and then finally the hand shaking and I think that's just an HDMI 2.1 thing um, The projector switches devices and goes through things pretty well But there are issues sometimes where you have to kind of connect or reconnect a device to get it to work correctly Other than that this thing's fantastic. Go check it out Check out your local dealer. Make sure if they have one on display, you go check out some of their content that they're playing and, and give it a whirl. All right, everybody. Hope you enjoyed today's review, part two of the Epson LS12000. This is an excellent projector at this price point. If you're in the market for a new projector, make sure you give it a test drive. Hey, thanks again for watching my episodes. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe below. If you want to see more, let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for joining me here on The Dangin, and I'll talk to you guys next time.